to the Italian Football Podcast. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Italian Football Podcast. I'm Carlo Garganesi, joined as always by Nima Tavali. So Napoli are champions of Italy, their first Scudetto in 33 years. Of course, they, they clinched the title on Thursday of, of last week and Nima and myself did a, a special Scudetto celebration extra episode which we, which we pushed out on, on Thursday night. Um, so check that out if you want to review the fantastic achievement of Napoli winning the Scudetto once again. On today's show, we're going to be talking about Napoli's celebration of Scudetto on Sunday. Um, it was absolutely incredible. Napoli playing against Fiorentina. Some of the celebrations after the game were, 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 were out of this world. It's, it's the most incredible stadium celebration I think I've ever seen. Um, so we'll talk all about that. But we're also going to depth on the three huge games in the battle for the top four um, on, on the weekend. Um, Milan against Lazio. Roma against Inter and Atalanta against Juventus. The picture for the for the top four is is a lot lot clearer now. Um, of course, though, this this week coming, we have the return of European football and that huge historic Champions League semi final between Milan and Inter. We're going to be previewing that game. Rafael Leal possibly probably missing the game through injury. How big is that going to be in the outcome of the tie? Juventus and Roma in the Europa League semis and also Fiorentina in the, the Conference League semis. So it's going to be a huge, huge week for Italian football in Europe. So we'll preview all of that. OK, so this is, for all our first-time listeners, our weekly Monday show, which is a free episode which do which reviews the weekend Serie action, all the biggest talking points in Italian football. But if you want to support the Italian football podcast and receive all our content throughout the week, not just our Monday one, including our weekly Q&A episode every Tuesday, where we answer all the questions sent in from our patrons, plus the weekly Thursday midweek review show, plus interviews, post-match reaction, and much, much more. Then go to patreon.com slash TIFP and become a subscriber for just $2.99 a month plus VAT. And for all of you listening on Spotify, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, we'd really, really appreciate a five-star rating and give us a follow and subscription. It really, really helps us to grow. Okay, right. Let's start off then with Napoli and their celebrations. Okay, Nima. Um, So, (laughs) have you ever seen a title Scudetto celebration that we saw in in Napoli after their their success? Uh, (laughs) (laughs) No, I mean, it was... I I have a friend who was was sending me videos of... uh, Because he was there, he had a ticket for the Fiorentina game. uh, Napoli-Fiorentina at the stadium. And it was just absolutely fantastic. It was stunning. Uh, There was nothing... Um, I've never seen anything like it. It was we knew it was going to be amazing. Um, and 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 it was just just as crazy. Uh, it, it was it was fantastic. It was genuinely fantastic. I mean, we know Italy is a country that doesn't do anything with moderation, and Napoli is known to be the city in that country that doesn't do anything with moderation, both good and bad, happiness and sadness. And this was pure ecstasy. It was pure pure happiness and joy. Um and and he's he's he texted me he sent me all these videos that I forwarded to you Carlo and and he said look it's he, I'm I'm reading his message now he says look it was incredible you hear stories about non-stop parties and you think they're exaggerated um and you see it and they far exceed anything you could have imagined or thought it was insane genuinely insane um it's the best atmosphere he says he's ever seen at a football stadium uh, so. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what to say other than to add to that. It's just congratulations, Napolitani. Congratulations, Italian football, because I think this is good for Italian football. I think the fact that a team from the South has won the Scudetto again for the first time in 33 years is good for the league. It's good for the the league to grow in Italy and all of Italy to feel part of it. Um, Mm -hmm. Fourth Serie A title winner in four years. Again, when when a league is tight, it, it makes it more interesting and exciting to watch. And when you add to the fact that this has, you know, made the you know the the success, the historic success of Italian teams in Europe, five teams in the Serie A, three competitions, mm. that makes it you know that 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 also brings an interest to the Serie A. Uh, and that's why you get these. Yeah, and that's why you get these special occasions like we saw with Napoli because it really means something extra when your team it like really Napoli, does. It doesn't Napoli wins it. Yet. 
Yeah, no, exactly. and, it, and it really was special. I mean, just to expand, I mean, I was watching it on, on TV. I really, really hope that they re- release a movie um, on this. Um, I think they will. I, mean, I think they surely will, because, I mean, it's Aurelio De Laurentiis. He's a movie producer, and he really, you know, he was producing a movie here with, with the whole day on Sunday before the game, where you had the, 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 um, the Fiorentina players doing a guard of honour um, for, for the, and then put, saw the fans, the choreography, um, you know, all the blue throughout the, throughout, throughout the, the packed Stadio Maradona. But I mean, after the game, it was just unbelievable. It was amazing. It was like, you know, it was like a concert. It was a concert. I mean, they had all these different musical artists playing. Um, they had uh, um, the, the rapper Clement, Clementino. Uh, then they had, you know, Eduardo Benato, who everyone will probably remember from the famous uh, Italian 90s song with Gianna Nanini. Um, so he was there, um, and then they had like you know, just like all the all the songs that you would associate with Napoli and Napoli winning the Scudetto, the Neapolitan songs, but but also like Go West by the um, Pet Shop Boys, um, which is which, is <laughs> which I still don't understand why no. they play, and they've been doing it since the Larentis took over. That's like yeah. the song they march into. I still don't understand. I, yeah. If, I want to know why that song is played. Like, why I, that song was chosen? Yeah. Why yeah. is that song? But, I mean, why? it is such, it is such a beautiful song, though, and it is so. It does feel like yeah, it has become synonymous with with Napoli. And then they, they had the Life Is Life song playing, which is obviously the one Maradona. that Maradona made famous. But for me, his. I got to say that when they played uh, Pino Daniele's uh, Napoli, that was that that yeah. even choked me up. Like, yeah, it was. It was incredible. Well, we are the champions, of course. And but just the scenes, you know, like when it went dark and because the, 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 it was getting into the evening and, yeah. and it all went dark. And then all the Napoli fans with their light, phone lights and the green lights coming out of the stadium as well. And then they did the, the, the green, white and red. And it was it was amazing. And all the players and Politano, especially, I loved him. And he was like waving the flag and, and Ossiman was going crazy as well. And, and you know, it was Tommaso, the, 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 the espresso man. I mean, like, I mean, Tommaso is, I mean, he's such a character, isn't he? I mean, he's been there since. since Tommy Starace, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's been there since, since the time of Maradona. You know, he was there with Maradona. So he's, you know, he's, he's been there when they last won the Scudetto and like and he's such a I mean he's such a personality I mean he picked up De Laurentiis and then he when he was doing the dance when Rafa to the Rafaela Cara song um you know the famous song and, and he was holding up when they when the game finished he, he held up the 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 stoppage time board you know the board that they hold up for the stoppage time um and the, the, the fourth official usually holds up. And he, Tommaso was Tommy was was holding it up with the number three was yeah. in. He like he put the number three on it and he was holding it up. And he, he was. It was oh, interesting it was though to see how Napoli's ultras reacted. I mean, they they the, there was a bit of talk about it um, when it came out on social media. The sense that they had the scudetto, the the shield, but they had it upside down, which in ultras language is means that you know when they conquer when, when they take some when they take an opposing or rival ultras groups flags and banners they they wave they wave them upside down now this was to show that they had conquered milan scudetto or from the north like not just milan but they conquered the scudetto from the north they've they conquered the league from the north and and they didn't say campione d'italia they said campione in italia champions in italy not champions of italy to even more to even more accentuate that they identify as neapolitan and not italian yeah. Um, so yeah. that, that you know that that was the uh, that's the cultural thing. angle, which is very interesting and dates yeah. back, obviously, which was what made Nav- Maradona's Scudetto say so special is that it was a victory for the South against the North and against all the exactly. prejudice and the stereotyping and the abuse that you know that the that the Napoli players and fans get from um, from you know the Northern teams uh, and and yeah, I mean it's very it's very very telling but it was it was amazing and even on thursday i mean obviously after the when we haven't talked about the celebrations on thursday um you know i mean that was that was special as well i mean all the fireworks i mean there was one video where i don't know if they have a category if there's some kind of at the end of the year where they do like a video of the year around the world but it has to be in the in like it was it was uh, a picture of the overlooking naples and you could see all the way across for miles and 
in unison, everyone was letting off fireworks and lights. Have you seen that video? And it was unbelievable yeah. on Thursday. It was no, no. That, that was the, the. I think it was the Serie A who published like this kind of of all of Naples. Yeah, um, that's and the one. Immediately when when the final whistle in Udine went, the fireworks like clock like just just like that started going off, and the entire city looked like this firework, like these these incredible fireworks, and. And it is it is a Neapolitan thing um, because like it's 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 you know fireworks they, that's how you celebrate these things, and and everyone had like it's, it's like where do you find fireworks in May, like do you know what I mean like in Sweden they just banned them all, um, and, and and but in Naples everyone just had it and and that's how they celebrate. It reminds me of, it reminded me of of Iran actually and and how people celebrate things there immediately the final. It was like a New Year's, wasn't it? Yeah. it was like a New Year's celebration yeah. or like a wedding celebration in in. Um... In yeah, in like Middle Eastern countries, they do that. That's very much what they do as well. Yeah, no, it? it felt like just they shoot all their guns up in the skin to the air. <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> no, but it was like for me, it was like the, the fireworks just reminded me of Iran. Whenever there's a celebration, it's just immediately yeah. fireworks go off. Uh, yeah, I don't understand how. How do you have fireworks lying around the house? Like, it's like well, know. as you do. Like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> just ask, no. just ask uh, Mario Balotelli. He has used yeah, to have a few lying like, around the house. Who has in fireworks? The- Running around the house like it's just mad yeah yeah, yeah. now it was it was really really special um let's let's move on to to milan milan against lazio last season's champions milan officially now not the champions anymore not the reigning champions of italy any longer um but they're they're i mean their priority obviously along with the champions league semi-final which we'll, which we'll discuss in a bit is getting back into the the champions league for next season and they face a real battle now especially after that that terrible draw against Cremonese in midweek. They had to win this game against Lazio. It was absolutely must win. Uh, we'll talk about, you know what, we'll talk about Liao when we do the preview of um, of, of the, the Champions League semi-final. Obviously, that is a huge, huge blow potentially from this game, but it was crucial they won this game and they won it well and dominated. Yeah, no, look, it's uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, Milan were fantastic. Uh, we were very crim- we were very critical of them, correctly so, and purely of the Cremonese after the Cremonese game. But this was a different Milan. Um, they they did what Pioli wants them to do in the sense that he had them. But I mean, he did start his first team pretty much, didn't he? I mean, it was it was um, it was they pressed really high up. They scored pretty early on because of the press. Um, this was this was Milan's Pioli when they are at their best. Um, and no, I was really, I was really, really, really impressed with how they did. Uh, we're going to talk about Lazio as well, because this is the second time we've seen Lazio completely, for, for a better express expression, completely shit the bed at the San Siro. Yeah. They were asphalted twice in a week. Uh, yeah, I mean, I want to come on. To, let's come on to Lazio in a bit. Let's just just focus on kind of what Milan did really well um, in this game. I mean, I thought they dominated all facets of this game, every area of the pitch, every department, defence, midfield, attack, they were better than Lazio. Uh, I thought they created uh, good chances, Milan, uh, and they conceded very, very little. Um, so when you're doing that, you deserve to win. Um, I and But there's obviously one player that stands out above the rest, and that is Teo Hernandez, who scored a, an absolutely fantastic goal. I mean, 80-yard run. He ran from just outside his own penalty area he ran with the ball and then, I mean, took a slight deflection, but absolutely brilliant. I mean, there's, there's, there's probably, other than Alfonso Davies, there isn't another fullback either side, left or right, that can score, that can do that, score that kind of goal and go on that kind of run. Um, he's, he's a world-class, he's a world-class player, Teo Hernandez. Uh, and he is the best, he is the best left-back in the world, along with Davies. Um, there's, there's, there can be no doubt about that, I think now. And, and that was, that was special, and because he, I mean, he got Puskas. Was it? Did he get the Puskas Award for best for goal of the season? Or he was definitely nominated, wasn't he? Yeah, he was won nominated, it. but I don't think yeah. he won it. I don't know if he won it, but he was nominated. I mean, I'm not saying this this won't be nominated, but I mean, again, you're talking about <laughs> whenever you score a goal from one end of the pitch to the other, you're talking about. I mean, I know Lazio they barely put a challenge in, but but I mean, it was an incredible goal, um, and he is going to be absolutely crucial because if Rafael Liao is out for 
I mean, you know, for this, for the not only for the for the derby, but also you know for, for potentially for at least one Serie A game, then then uh, you know, Teo Hernandez is Milan's match winner. Other than other than, uh, I mean, it sounds crazy to say that a left back is your match winner, but he is Milan's match winner along with with um, with with Liao. He's the one that has that X factor that can produce out of nothing, you know, and he he showed that in this game. But for the top four, huge. It was absolutely crucial that they got it. They're back in it now. They're still two points off the top four, but they just have to win their next two games against Spezia and Sampdoria and then see where they are before the Juventus game. And and they've got no... They have to win. They just have to keep winning now. They've got no other alternative than that. They absolutely have to... Um, they absolutely have to uh, win the remaining games because Milan, you know, with Inter hitting form and Juve winning, taking that crucial win against Atalanta. And to be honest, you know, Lazio now have the easy games left. They've got the Leches and the Empolis and, and all that, uh, you know, on paper, I say easy, uh, but not uh, in actual... <laughs> they actually have to do the job now because, you know, they that 10-point advantage to to uh, to that spot, to that fifth spot, is, is shrunk down to three now in just two weeks, two, three weeks. So... They Lazio need to get their shit together. It's very, very, very simply and bluntly put. They got Lat Le- Lecce at home, Udinese away, Cremonese at home, Empoli away. They have to win all four. I don't think they can afford to count uh, to not win, to, to to draw, maybe draw one, but they have to pretty much win every single one of those games. Otherwise, it will be you know everything that we praised Sarri for will be kind of you know he he will be it, it will be it will fall on its face. It will become the biggest anticlimax ever. Um, Mm. Because they're an excellent in an excellent position to to finish. I, I think I think that Lazio have to absolutely bottle it. Even now, after losing these two games, I think they absolutely have to bottle it to not to not get Champions League with the with the fixture list they've got. Lecce at home, Udinese away, Cremonese home, Empio. You could not dream of a better a better running than that. And they've got a three point gap over fifth place over Milan. Milan still have to play Juventus. Uh, in between, all the, the, obviously, they, they've also got to play two Champions League games, which are going to take a lot out of them. Um, we know Milan's depth is not great. So the, the chances of Milan winning all four games, I'm not going to say slim, but it's going to be very, very difficult. So, you know, I think Lazio can even afford to slip up in, in one. Of, I mean, they can definitely afford a draw. Um, they can afford at least one draw from these four games. But they should be fine. They should be fine. They, they will have to bottle it. I think Lazio not to not to get the top four. That's not, I'm not saying they won't bottle it, but I think they will really they will really have to mess up Lazio not to get top four from here, in my opinion. But they were awful in this game. Um, I thought the whole the collectively and individually um, they looked you know they looked scared of Milan. Um, Milan were the bosses, um, and everyone was terrible individually. But I thought Felipe Anderson was all right, apart from him. I thought they were all bad. They defended terribly. For, for the best defence in Serie A before the game, the two goals they conceded were terrible. Playing out from the back and getting caught for the for the first goal. And then Teo, as, as brilliant a goal as it was, he ran the whole length of the pitch. Did anyone even get close to putting a challenge in? I mean, he just... I know Teo, he's so quick. And when he charges and he drives, it's difficult to get close to him. But... For no one to even basically put a challenge in. I mean, that that's that really was cool. weird, and and I wanted to, it. It was really, really weird. But also, I have to say, Sergei Milinkovic Savic, what the hell is going on? Yeah, yeah. This is this is just. I not... wanted to raise this on the last game, and I forgot. I had it noted down to, to, yeah. to mention this. No, off this the is last the match. second time now. Like his form is completely mm-hmm. off a cliff. Uh, yeah. Or twenty twenty three generally has been dreadful. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't think he is overrated. I think he just needs to leave Lazio. I think this is what happens when you keep a player too long. And I think that's what's happened here. Possibly. Um, I mean, if uh, just, I, just, just, to, just to clarify what the actual form is, he's gone five games since that Juventus game, which was a gift for him. Let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> they gifted him that cult Juventus. Five games since the Juventus game um, without, without uh, any goal contributions. But his numbers in 2023, as you said, not good. One ass- one assist in seven months is is dreadful. I'm sorry. Like you can talk about his overall game. You know he's chipped in with some. He's got three goals in 2023, which is okay, but it's not what you expect from a player mm. that's that's valued at so highly. Of course, it's not just about numbers. You know, Lazio's midfield. Uh, I mean, I, I actually think Luis Alberto has been been superior to him uh, recently. Um, but yeah, I I I. I 
I don't, I'm not saying, I don't know if overrated is the right word. I, I mean, I might have used that word. I, I think it's the wrong word. It's Milinkovic Savage. But put it this way, I can see why he's, he's stayed at Lazio all his career. And it's not just down to Latito. That is an important part of it. But I think that if he really was that good, uh, I think big clubs would have paid the money for him. And, and I think that he's lacking something. Um, as a team player, as a consist in terms of consistency, um, I think there's just something there's just something missing there that would make him for a, for a huge huge club, certainly a huge European club uh, outside of Italy. I think there's something missing there. Um, but his form, yeah, absolutely, has it's gone completely off the boil, completely. Okay, no, Nima, I just, I just just to build on that, I think I think he's regressed. I think he's regressed a bit as well because they didn't. The timing to sell him was maybe one or two years ago, and they didn't. And COVID was there, so there was not really any offers, and the offers that came were not good enough. So that's why that's why I think he's regressed. But I don't think he's overrated. I don't think any of that. I think he's still a fantastic player. I wonder if he uh, if if maybe he has regressed permanently or not. I have to ask myself that question. <clears throat> But I think, so I haven't decided on that yet, but I do think now he has to leave. And I don't think, you know, Milinkovic Savic in form walks into pretty much every, any midfield in, in the world. I, to me, he has, he is a complete midfielder. When he's at his best, he's just, he's world class. There's no doubt about that. Um, so I still believe in him. I just think that Lotito, they need, they need to cash in. They need, they need to cash in. They need to, um, they they need to move. They, they they that relationship needs to end, and it probably should have ended maybe one or two years ago. That's my point. Yeah, that's 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 fair enough. And also, his contract expires in twenty twenty four. So, I mean, <laughs> they have to make a decision. They either sign him a new contract and he finishes his career with Lazio, or or they sell him <laughs> this summer. Is 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 one or the other. Um, let's let's move on to, yeah. to let's move on to Inter Inter hmm. uh, Roma versus Inter at the at the Olimpico. Um, we'll talk from Inter's point of view first, because we said after their their, their win last midweek, 6-0, um, that Inter were on fire, and they just continued their, their fantastic form and another another dominant performance and deserved win, Nemo, right? Controlled, patience, these are the key words again. It's And that midfield... You know when they um that was that is my inter dream midfield. It's Barella, Chalanoglu, and uh, Brozovic, and Brozovic in particular. Like this is again we talk about how the midfield in today's game is so important that you have three central midfielders that can do everything, not just defend, not just tackle, not just pass, not just create, but all have you know not just be direct, uh, not just be patient, all of the above, and and those three, even though Chalanoglu which I think is the one of the most interesting aspects of this game tactically, was how Mourinho had decided that Chalanoglu had to be erased. He didn't do it with Brozovic, and that's kind of what cost them the opening goal. But with Chalanoglu, it was obvious. He just did not want Chalanoglu to have an inch of space. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, th- th- that's interesting for me. But other than that, from a tactical point of view of how Roma play, but we'll get to that later. But no, for me, Inter were were very controlled, calm, patient, composed, and, and that is so important. They they're not everything they did wrong up until a few weeks ago was this they were too stressed, they were stressed, they were frantic, they were, you know, it felt like from minute one it was minute ninety, like there was no calm and composure. And 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 the more they it became like the you know and, and the way that they behaved, they were not in control mentally. Now they are. They are very cool, they're very calm, they're controlled, they're focused, concentrated. Um, mature, uh, they acted like a big team. This is how Simone should have this team playing week in, week out. They, 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 they shouldn't be panicking. They shouldn't be frantic. They should, they should systematically and calmly, like all big teams, you know, build. Uh, you know, the game is ninety minutes. There's no need to start panicking from minute one. Um, mm. You know. St- they, and this is something they've done, and and and, the, and it's ironic that now when they're not creating as much chances as they did when they were much more frantic, they're actually scoring now as well. Yeah. Um, and and I think that's uh, they've been even, really clinical, really yeah. really clinical yeah. in the last in the last few games. It's just it's, it's so. But it also goes to show that I think that you know if you keep playing well, and I think Inter definitely deserve more points than they've got this season. There's no doubt about that. Uh, you know if you keep playing it, eventually you know 
you the we talk about the xg and the expected points eventually it does move towards the mean uh, yeah. and i think that is that is kind of also what's happening but at the same time i do think that inter like you said i agree they are a lot more calm and composed um on the pitch and then that that translates to when you have chances as well you're more calm and composed in front of goal but it's not just the attack i think the defense defense has, has been great uh, absolutely great i mean the defense of Damian Acerbi and Bastoni i mean we, it's got to the point now where you can actually we can actually say that Skriniar hasn't been missed at all i mean those three as a unit but Damian taking that right center back role they're not missing Skriniar they've been absolutely fantastic they've got one conceded in the last five games they never ever look like conceding in this game never i mean i know we'll come to Roma i know they're decimated i know they they don't have that many options, their attackers, even the ones that came on clearly unfit. But, you know, they never, but it's not just this one game, you know, Inter's defence, and we've seen the displays in the Champions League, like against Porto, um, you know, against Barcelona um, earlier in the season. I know Skriniar was, I think Skriniar was around for that. But anyway, you know, Inter's defence, uh, especially the, the three that are playing now, absolutely magnificent. And they've and conceded the, one goal in the last five games and they've won all of those five games. And Onana has been pulled out to do to make some of those saves, to, to make saves. And um uh, and so has Handanovic. I mean he he started against Hellas, he started um so so you know it's 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 good to see the goalkeepers and the defense kind of working out. But I have to say, yes, the Acerbi Darmi and Bastoni have been fantastic, but uh, Skriniar is missed. Skriniar is without a shadow of a doubt missed because Skriniar to the right and Darmian to the right ahead of him is way, way better. Um, and, and and they have missed him and because the alternative is D'Ambrosio and Dumfries and, and that is just not good enough. Mm. Can we um, give some love to Dumfries though? Can we give him any love in this, after this game? <laughs> any? Is there a chance of even some little bit of love for that assist and, look, and, and the mean, way that he bullied Spinazzola? He the was the assist was good. There's no he doubt about domi- that. He dominated Spinazzola in this game. He bullied him. Spinazzola didn't get a kick, and and and, and the assist was great. It was a great. Yeah, the cross. assist was great. Was a, but I mean, again, I, I'm not sitting here saying he's pride my my con. I know I I know we're in a group where I wound up all you Inter fans by calling him pride my con to wind you up because you all you all. <laughs> hate Dumfries and you bitch about him more than I bitch about Allegri but but this let all I'm saying is let's give Dumfries some credit when he deserves it because he's not always been shit I mean I know he, he he's been shit a lot but but he's had some good games this season and I think he's doing all right at the moment and I thought he was I thought he was fantastic in this game give him credit where he deserves Spinazzola okay he's not the same Spinazzola he was but he absolutely bullied Spinazzola in this game Every time Spinazzoli tried to take him on, he tackled him. And in going the other way, he was effective as well. So, you know, just this is Carlo being, you know, lay off Dumfries, you know. <laughs> je suis, je suis Denzel. Oh, Denzel. Yeah, well, you can have him. And then, you, you know, <laughs> seriously, he makes some, um, like his technical, like again, with the ball, did you see? He makes these errors that makes you wonder, like, is he really a professional footballer? Like, it's it's these technical errors that he, he makes... That he, I feel like I, I I'm standing there and I'm not because I'm, I'm I shouldn't be. <laughs> but like, so does um, Lukaku. He made that make those errors even when he when even when he was when he was at his best. But is he getting back to his best, Lukaku? Because mm. his great form. I mean, he's not going to be the same player he was. But but I mean that was that was a fantastic clinical finish. That is when you can tell that Lukaku is in, is fully fit again. He feels confident again because. You don't. You don't even think about it when you when you're playing well as a footballer, especially for a striker. Everything just comes naturally. You just just unconsciously bang. You just hit it. You don't even have to think about it. And the way that he just took that first time. Um, and if you again, like I said last week, you look at his numbers. He's got nine goal contributions in ten games in the last month. I think he's only started six of those games. Um, so nine goal contributions in six starts. I mean, it's getting to the point now where obviously, um, and we'll talk about this when we, when we do the preview, but it's got to the point now where does he deserve to be the starter ahead of Dzeko in terms of the pecking order? Because I think in terms of the big games, Inzaghi still considers Dzeko ahead of him in the big games. Does Lukaku deserve to start again above Dzeko now, given this I don't, I don't, I don't think that's what he's doing. 
I I disagree with that. I don't think he's he's starting Jekyll over Lukaku in big games. What he's doing is he's rotating the squad, which is the exact correct thing to do. This is now when he has to rotate. They're playing. I mean, April was nine games. Every three days there was a game. Mar- May is no better. He has to rotate, and yeah. that's why you have twenty two, twenty three, twenty four players, and that's the job of the sport. All the, all the, all the so, big games. <laughs> All the big games, the Champions League games, Dzeko started started well, all the Champions previously, League Previously, yes, because Lukaku was 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 dreadful. I mean, have we forgotten? Well, that's the, exactly that's the point I'm asking. That's the <laughs> that's the reason I'm asking the question. Now, has Lukaku shown with his fitness and his form and his goal contributions and how he's playing that now he should be ahead of Dzeko? I think I think if Champions everything League goes games. well, if everything goes well for Inter, meaning no injuries and they continue, you know, if they can draw against Milan because I think that's what Simon is going for. I think the plan is exactly what it was last year, as in last year in the semi-final of the Coppa Italia. That was the dress rehearsal. The first game, if you remember it, I remember it vividly. It was probably the worst derby I think I've seen between Inter and Milan in, 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 in recent years, in like at least three, four years. That that first leg Coppa Italia semi-final was abhorrent. Um, and it was clear that that's the strategy that Simone wants to use in cup games. He He knows it's two legs, the first leg is is safety first control. Don't don't you know? Don't do something crazy. Just try to play off the game, finish the game off, and and try to you know get something, uh, get a result that 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 is acceptable that you can live with ahead of the second leg, a return leg. So that that's what he's doing, um, and that's what I think he's doing. So I I one hundred and ten percent think that we will see Mikitarian, we will see Jeko and Lautaro start against Milan on Wednesday. There's no doubt mm. in my mind. Well, let's talk about the Champions League. We were going to talk about it after, but now we've, you've given us a nice segue there. So, Champions League, Milan versus Inter on Wednesday in the first leg of the semi-finals. Now, you've just mentioned that you think Inzaghi should go for the draw. No, don't I think you, he... Don't I think, you, well, you're think, you think that he's gonna, that's how he's going to yeah. play. He'll be happy with a draw and then come back to the yeah. home game in the yeah. second leg, if you call it that, with the fans uh, for, the, for the second leg next week. But yeah. Don't you think with the Rafael Leal injury, I mean, my understanding from the people I've spoken to is he's going to miss the game uh, and he's probably going to miss the weekend game and they're going to try and get him back for the second leg. They, 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 they just think it's, it's, it's too much of a risk to play. And that's, that's what I've been told from the people I've, I've, I've spoken to, um, insiders and stuff. Um, I mean, given that Leal is out, and we'll come on to how important it is for Milan, but from an interest point of view, don't you think they try and take advantage of Leal's absence and, and maybe go for the win more go for the win I think they will do they will do they, it's, I'm not in turn, it's, it's in Zaghi it's not Allegri he's not gonna <laughs> like he's not gonna park like that's just not in his nature but he's going to play this like he did against Benfica and Porto meaning you know he's going to want to retain possession when he can but he's not going to have the balance of the team disrupted and give Milan space to attack them that's not what he's going to do he's not going to Spalletti this I mean Spalletti against Milan the naivety on display tactically was was yeah. was 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 horrible. I mean, that's what mm. cost Napoli that and Osiman Osiman's injury cost Napoli the the semi final spot. So you don't think they'll push up high as high as they that shouldn't. Napoli did? They shouldn't. They, that would be a huge even mistake. with Leo, even if Leo's not playing, even without Leo. Without Leo, there's still Teo Hernandez. Um, you don't concede space to Milan. That's what Milan want you to do. That's what Pioli wants you to do. They want you to push them high up so they can win the ball and hurt you on the counter, and you have to be an idiot to walk into that trap. Um, Inter will have to, what they did against, to a certain extent, what they did to Roma as well. Um, this this game plan were of composure, calm, control the ball, build from the back. That's the thing. Inter are so patient. If you look at these goals that they score, against uh, the, the the goals they've scored against the first goal against Roma in particular look at how how patient Inter build up from the back they are so controlled and composed they are so well positioned the players know exactly where to go and how to go and when to move the positional interchanges if you push Inter too up too high up like Roma did and lose positioning well then Brozovic has got all the time in the world on the ball or Chalanoglu or whoever's playing and they will hurt you um so it's uh, you know that's that's going to be um, you know th- that that's the danger, and I think that's the game plan he's going with Inzaghi. He's not go- you know he of course he wants to win the game, but he's not going to 
play against Milan like he played earlier in the season against other teams where they just pressed, pressed, pressed high up and exposed themselves. That would be mad. Mm. Um, that would be crazy. He's not from Milan. Do that. From Milan's point of view, though, obviously we can't we we can't sugarcoat how much of a blow this is if if Leal's out. I mean, he's absolutely huge. I mean, I was I just I just saw a stat um, before we started recording when Leal hasn't played um, this season from the start. Um, Milan have well, when they haven't played due to suspension or, or him not being fielded from the first minute. Milan have only won once in ten games in the current season. Without him, uh, and and that I mean that 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 speaks for itself about how important Liao is, and we've seen obviously um, in the in the game against Napoli how devastating he was uh, against Napoli, and how he's it's a shame, such a huge shame for him because he's found his form so much since the start of April, and he has been back to his best, back to the Liao that was so devastating in the Scudetto season last season. Um, so, I mean, it's absolutely huge. Also, from a psychological point of view, I think it's, it's absolutely massive. And, it, and it, it just goes to show kind of in the Champions League, um, you know, how important it is that you have your key players and injuries. And, you know, Le- Milan losing Liao, their best player before the semi-final. I mean, you know, if you're going to say, is this, this could be the, what knocks them out? Possibly. It could be like Ossiman for Napoli. You know, how, how do they replace him? Who do they replace him with? That's the question. Is it Salah makers? Is it, um, do they change their system a little bit? Is it Origi? I, I don't know how they replace him, to, to, to be honest with you. you know, I think it'd probably be Salah makers. I think they'll probably go, they'll probably go with Salah makers instead of, instead of... Um, I'm instead sorry, of, yeah. but... I'm sorry, but I'm not buying this too. <laughs> I'm not buying this too much. I think this, I, 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 yes, he got injured. We saw he got injured. It's a muscle injury, but there is, if he, he, he's going to start. I, I'm watching this game thinking Rafael Leal is going to start the game. Simple as that. If, if there is a possibility that he starts, he's going to start. Simple as that. Everything else is just blah, 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 blah. I'm, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying this. He's going to miss the game. Nonsense. He's in there bluffing then. Oh, it's a bluff. Course. I think he is injured. We saw that he was injured. I don't think they invented that. Um, you think that they're bluffing that he's maybe not going to play the game? Yeah, that's the dude. And I think Inzaghi's too smart to fall for that trip. And, you know, that, that, that kind of a trap. I think he's, he's preparing mm. his game plan regardless. I mean, I don't know what, exactly what the injury he's got. It hasn't really been specified exactly. Is it the adapter? But I mean, I mean, my experience, I used to get a lot of injuries when I played. My experience with muscle injuries is... Well, it takes two muscle, weeks. Doesn't muscle it? injuries are two to three weeks, even if they're very, very minor. So the idea that he can be back in four days, I don't know. No, I, I'm not I, buying I, it. I'm I, can't, not. I, can't, I can't see it. If, it. if it is a muscle injury, like they say it is, I, I can't see him being back for this game. I really can't. If it is, like they've said, if it is a muscle injury and the Ducks a muscle injury, like they've said, I don't see how he's back for this game. I can't. I can't see it. And if they do, and they do play him, I think then obviously you're risk with a muscle injury, you're risking a pull uh, or worse, and then you're you're out for the rest of the season. Um, so, you know, from the people that I've spoke to, Milan think it's too much for a risk to play him. He's going to miss the game against Inter. He's going to miss the game against Spezia, is it, at the weekend? And yeah, they'll, Spezia. They'll tr- and which we're going to get to the back. preview part because that yeah. relegation battle is just, yeah. wow. Okay. Yeah, your favorite. Yeah, we'll, no, we'll but it's not that. just that because it's involving the big teams as well because they're all playing yeah. the Champions League chasing teams as well. It's it's mad. Mm. It's absolutely mad. It is. It is. But, I mean, away from the, the whole Liao, the Liao thing, I mean, let's just underline again, like we did in the preview, uh, which, which you can find on our YouTube channel, that... This is for Italian football, but from the city of Milan, uh, the footballing city of Milan. I mean, this is such a historic game, such a great game. I mean, it's going to be absolutely massive, isn't it? I mean, no, you're going no, to no. it. You're going to the second leg, aren't yes, you? Yes, I'm going to the return leg. Um, I'm going to the return leg. It's just going to be one of those quick in and out, like 24 hours, just go there, come back mm. kind of thing. But no, it's going to be really nice. I haven't been to Milan in May in a very, very long time. And it's a, it's a, I love it. It's proper spring because it's, but it's, you know, the sun is shining here in Sweden, but it's bloody cold. It's not <laughs> cold there. So it's going to be nice. And, and I've got a few special, hopefully a few special things planned. Um, I'm looking forward to be able to do. So now mm. it's going to be, uh, you know, I, I just want there to be a game to go to. I don't want Inter to get smashed 3-0, uh, a shock defeat. And, I, you know, I want it to be competitive. And, and that's mm. what I'm saying. And I think... So you don't want Inter to, you don't want Inter to be 3-0 up then going to well, the second No, I, I don't mind a coronation. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of a coronation 
coronation I do not mind at all. Yeah, but I don't I just... mind that kind of coronation either. I don't like the one we saw this weekend. But... <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big fan of that either. But look, no, it's like that, you know, it's, 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 I think everything that come that comes out from Inter, every time Bastoni, Darmian, Lukaku, Inzaghi, every single one of them talks, it's, they keep accentuating and stressing this point. It's two games. It's 180 minutes. That's not by chance. That that's the mentality they have, and that 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 reassures me a little bit. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. I mean, will will Pioli surprise us again? Will he play a three five two? Will he play a three four two one? Will he play a three five one one? I think everything is possible. But the good thing for that is that Inter have already played Milan playing all those formations and so they know how Milan can they, I mean these teams know each other inside and out yeah um, so there's not there's not much and that... also it's also Derby and I mean I mean, don't get me wrong I, I make Inter good favourites for this game with Liao being out with the form that Inter are in they're playing fantastically well Milan are not in terrible form but they've been drawing a lot of games and they're, they're nowhere no way at the level that Inter have been in the last five matches I mean Inter 15 goals scored one conceded in the last five games playing brilliantly, defending great, attacking great and scoring goals, taking their chances. The midfield looks the most complete midfield, maybe even in the competition right now. I, I, you know what? I don't. Th- that's what I was something I wanted to talk about. Chalanoglu Barella uh, is, I mean, Chalanoglu Barella and Brozovic, that's, uh, yeah. No, that, that is a, well, we spoke they, about this last week, didn't they? Yeah. yeah, they have everything. They can do everything. Everything you ask of a midfield, they can do. And I, but I don't think he's going to start Chalanoglu against uh, against Milan on Wednesday. I think I think he's going with with Mikitarian because Mikitarian offers calm, cool on the ball, especially defensively. Chalanoglu is a little bit more direct, um, which mm. is a problem when he's in the, in the regista role that he can sometimes make Inter a bit frantic. He doesn't have that patience and calm. He goes for killer play. passes more as well, doesn't he? Which they yeah, can much come more off. Direct. They can yeah. come off, but they also can give the ball away. If it's well, not that's going the, to. yeah, but I'm not worried about his delivery. I think he's been really good at that. It's it's more the fact that he's not. He's still. I think he's not the finished product just yet in that role. You know, let's mm. remember he only arrived in Inter last season. Um, yeah. he's improved incredibly better than I ever imagined, but he's still a little bit too frantic at times. Mm. Um, and I think I think the midfield game, battle will I think the midfield battle will be important for Milan because if they've got not got Liao, they need to take control of that Milan that midfield battle and try and kill try and kill and control the game that way. And I think against Rome uh, against Roma against uh, Lazio they were absolutely dominant in centre midfield and Lazio have a good midfield so that's, that's they have that's, a very good midfield but so Lazio didn't turn them. up yeah but Lazio didn't turn ben, up Ben um, has been really really good yeah. recently and he scored some important goals uh, and and Tonali I thought was really good as well uh, against against Lazio as well so the midfield but I mean there's lots of intriguing battles lots of intriguing battles I mean Milan's defence in the Champions League has been been amazing hasn't it I mean they hadn't conceded for almost six months until that last minute goal against Osman and Hanscott conceded in Europe for almost six months uh, until that Osman goal I mean and in the 93rd minute so you know they're defending really really well uh it's going to be it's going to be an amazing amazing game I mean it's no it is no, no it's going to be there's no doubt for me into a favorite but yeah. it's a derby and in derby yeah, it's a derby often, it doesn't matter oh, who the, the rule book is. the rule back uh, rule uh the form book often goes out the window in yeah the, in the, no no it's, it's a derby games have derbies have their own logic um and especially with the Serie A uh, with, with the with the with the with the Champions League uh, derby as well like it has its own thing but no I'm 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 I'm, I'm expecting a much more tactical KG affair on on Wednesday, uh, mm. I, I think both. I mean, with Leao out, I think Pioli will want to kind of just play off this game as well. I'm not. I'm not I think. Sh- I think. I think he'd be delighted with a draw, and then try yeah. and get Leao back, and then exactly. you know, home or away, whatever you want to call it, San Siro, second yeah. leg. He's still got that Leao on the counter attack, even if Inter are more proactive than they would be yeah. away. I think it's it still leaves it open, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It really does. But we'll yeah. see. We'll see. Let's we have to, to talk. Yeah, we've yeah. got to talk about Roma because yeah. So let's talk about Roma from from. I mean, more from the bigger picture. I think because I mean, this game showed what has happened to Roma. They they've not won in four in 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 uh, in Serie A, and that has totally sent them off the rails in terms of the Champions League race. And I think we can almost say they're out of the Champions. No, they League are out of the, it. And this is this is why I was saying that they should just punt the Serie A. Doesn't matter where they finish. They need to finish, and they need to get to the Champions League. And the the only way they do that is via the the Europa League winning that. And and to be honest, 
for me, I, 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 for me, their chances went when Smalling got injured because he is way too important for them. As we saw with Roger Ibanez doing Roger Ibanez things, and oh I'm going to take a victory lap on that because I've been saying for three years he is not good enough for Roma. It's as simple as that. And you saw again, he he is a walking red card penalty and a stupid mistake waiting to happen. And he does it time and time. Ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous. It's, These goal calls and errors that he, he can't cut out of his game. And he can't, I mean, it's, he's it's not the, good enough. It's getting to the point now where you're thinking, he's never. is he ever going to cut them out of his game? No, because he's not good enough. He's, I, I hope he leaves Roma because he's not good enough for Roma. He's cost them three derbies that I know, that I can remember off the top of my head. Mm. Um, it's it's just always like this and it's and it's not it's it's unforced it's like he does well to win the ball and then he just squares it square squarely to lautaro for no reason yeah, it's no, just, brainless. He has these brainless moments. Brain, that's what I mean. Brain dead. Bra- yeah. He literally has like these brain farts and it, and it happens time and time again. And you can't do that. You just simply cannot do that. And it's not one time. It's not twice. Look, when Chris Smalling made a mistake in the fixture against Napoli at the Olympico where Ossiman scored, which was, by the way, a fantastic finish. It, was by, mm. it, wasn't, it wasn't a decisive error. It was a tiny, no, minuscule was, error. Yeah. But... That's okay. It's a hesitation. It's a slight hesitation. Yes, yeah, slight fraction of a session has a hesitation. And then from that angle, Osman scores one of the goals of the season. I mean, it's, it was reminiscent of Van Basten, if you remember, uh, from 88. Like that angle. It was crazy. It was more a, more a Rui Patricio error in that case. But this is what I mean. Defenders can make those kinds of mistakes, but you cannot make these kinds of mistakes. You know, the, the, the Acerbi did against Lazio. Like, you can't do that. And Acerbi apologized for that. And, he, and, he, and given how good he's been this season, we don't really see him do that too often. But with, with Ibanez, it's just another, it's just, it's just Tuesday afternoon for him. It's just <laughs> another day for him. It just happens every weekend, every week, every game. He can do that. He's a walking own goal, walking goal, walking red card, walking penalty, waiting to happen. Mm-hmm. And he's just not good. Well, Roma's, Roma, Roma made two big errors on both on both goals. The first one was Spinazzola. Huge error yeah. for Spinazzola. Yeah. Pushing up. I don't, I don't know what, I can't understand. I've watched it a few times. I can't understand what he was trying to do there because, mm. I mean, the offside trap wasn't on. So he no, clearly couldn't have, been, he couldn't have been playing an offside trap. Uh, and I don't know what, why he just charged up the field and left that space in behind well, him. The problem is, the problem they, is, and I don't think it was Spinazzola. For me, it's more that they missed Brozovic. Like as I said, it was clear that Chalanoglu was the was the man that Mourinho had honed in, honed in on. But the fact that they didn't have any, they allow Brozovic after interpass around for two minutes in their own half, building from behind. Roma then they play past Roma's press. And Brozovic is alone for 10, 15 yards, can drive the ball and pinpoint pass, pick out pinpoint yeah. passes. But that pass is only on because that pass That's is only true. on because of Spinazzola. It's Spinazzola. I mean, Spinazzola's big, it's his, it's his big error. I mean, yeah, yeah. You, can, you can go always go further back and yeah. say, yeah, you should, shouldn't have had all that time on the ball and, and on space and everything. But I, I don't know what Spinazzola, there was two disastrous errors, two, two disastrous mistakes. I mean, obviously the Ibanez one is, is, is bigger because it outright, results in a clear chance for Lukaku. Where's they the need first? to get rid of him. Where's the He's first one? He still needs to, crea- need to be created, the first one. But, yeah. uh, I mean... This, this is, the, Ibanez, for me, is the is the Roma version of Lazio's Johnny and Patrick. Like, this this is getting, <laughs> like, the, the, enough now. It's been going on for seasons. It's not going to work. Get thank rid of God, him. Thank God Italy didn't take him for the... Yes. <laughs> the team, Which right? I said at the time, if you remember. I was like, no, no, yeah. no. Oh, no. like he's not good enough and 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 I and I'm and, and I feel bad for Roma because the injuries I mean the decimated Well that's it I mean ultimately that the injuries have have killed them in recent games haven't they I mean in but this game how many how many it was going to be difficult how it was going to be difficult we were how, sent to, with centre midfield of, of Balve, the young kid, and Madi Kamara, who's who's clearly not at the level. No, he's Kamara. not. Kamara. I mean, have you ever seen him try to shoot? He actually had a good. He actually probably had the best chance. Rumor yeah, had. Yeah, he did. He, he can't even kick a ball. Like like lace, <laughs> shoot a ball. Like lace it. He can't. I do feel it. bad he, for him because I think he was decent in Greece. But yeah, my, Cristante think, at centre back and Belotti yeah. at striker. I mean, Belotti. I mean, no, he's I mean, he's not. I mean, he's it's, not. I mean, it's just embarrassing. It's embarrassing. It's yeah, zero season. goals. He's got yeah. zero goals. This but it's season. not just it's yeah. not just that. I mean, he's the, the, he's never really recovered from that injury at Torino, has he? I mean, it's just he just looks like a shell of a player. He looks he looks like an ex player. Like he moves like yeah. a former player. Have you seen like exhibition games 
when former players move. That's how yeah. it looks when Bellotti moves on the pitch. And that you can't at this level, I don't know if it's permanent or if it's just, you know, he has to, this is the season is a write off, but he does, he, he looks like an ex player. Um, it's not, it's not, it's not a good look at all for him. And I feel bad for him because I, I really rate the player. I think there was a player there at some point in his career. Hope he can get back to something. As for, but I got to say, for me, Roma, like again, another ACL, again, injuries at this point, mm. you know, once, twice, is it what, fifth, sixth year now in a row that Roma have this? What is going on? Like, how many ACLs, how many injuries, they are decimated. They are completely decimated again when it matters the most in May. And it's like, and we know Mourinho has a history of not, you know, not many injuries. So you mm. can't blame it on Mourinho. He's he's actually lowered the number of injuries they have and still they look no. like they do. This has been going on for years, hasn't it? It's, Serious injuries. I just the ACLs, don't understand the ACLs, it. the ACLs especially for years and years. Yeah. I mean, 10 years. At least ten years. Yeah, it's 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 getting to the point where you're thinking it's not just bad, ch- it's not just bad luck. It's not just there. There is something more. If it goes, if something happens repeatedly for almost a decade, there's then there's something you need to look into. Mm. Um, I well, think while I, we're talking about while we're talking about Roma, though, let's let's talk about their Europa League game against Bayer yeah, Leverkusen. Yeah. Are the injuries going to kill them for this for this tie, I've, or do you think? I think three five one one is the way to go forward. They has to start Tammy. I don't know Dybala. I mean, I thought Pellegrini was okay and decent. I think the three five one one. Pellegrini's been better. I think he has been better recently. Pellegrini. No, yeah, because know. Dybala's not starting, and we know that those two can't play together, unfortunately. And that's if I were to blame Mourinho for something, it is that he's not been able to unlock Dybala and Pellegrini together. I think that 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 I do. I expect more, even though I understand that Dybala is a special player and you should cater to his needs. I still think that you should be able to fit in Pellegrini in there somehow, um, yeah. and I'm that, that's that that I blame Mourinho for. But having said that, I think they're player three five one one. I think Leverkusen they lost on Friday, if I'm not mistaken, for the first time in fifteen games or sixteen seventeen. Two games. and a half months, yeah, yeah. Leverkusen had been unbeaten for two and a half months. I mean, it's going to be a very difficult game. Um, I mean, they've been in fantastic form, Leverkusen. They'd won seven in a row until a few weeks ago, and. But they did lose 2-1 at home to Cologne, and that would have knocked their confidence. But I think they do have dangerous players going forward. I think first. Liverpool, they are. Diaby, Asmo- Diaby Asmo- I'm a big fan, big fan yeah. of Diaby. Frimpong Asmo- at, at wing-back. I mean, they, they play... The thing is that the two systems are going to match up with each other because they play exactly the same system as Roma. 3-4-2-1 or 3-4-1-2 because it works sometimes plays as the number 10 behind two men. But, you know, same basically the same system with a back three. Uh, they have pacey wing, very pacey wing-backs who, who like to get forward. You know, so it becomes, I guess it becomes a like-for-like tactical battle in that sense. Maybe that might suit Mourinho more because he's good at that. Um, I yes. don't know. It's, 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 um, I would have said 50-50 or slightly in case of, in, in favour of Roma before. But the injuries, obviously, I think a lot will depend on who comes back. It looks like Dybala will be back. Uh, will Tammy Abraham be back? I mean, he came on as well. Um, so if they can play those two... You know, along with 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 Pellegrini, they'll have. At then least I think they have a chance. Think, they have some firepower. Yeah, yeah, they do, and I think the fact that we know that Liverpool's are a bit, are a much more progressive side. They like to attack and they like to move forward, and I and I think that's good for Roma. I I think Roma have to Mourinho has to they have to do peak Mourinho. They have to be disciplined, and I think they will be disciplined. Work hard organized they can't go to bed Spinazzola can't do things like that the midfield can't give space to the center of the pitch and they're at home so they the longer that game goes on and it's goalless then you know I I think Roma could snatch a goal and maybe steal of a win because yeah. for me Liverpool's in our favorites going into this game yeah. given where Roma are the injuries yeah I think it depends who comes back and how fit they are it's not just about coming back it's like you know yeah. I mean, exactly. Dybala's been playing on one leg for the last few weeks. I mean, it was enough against Feyenoord, but, you know, it, you can't you can't play. How long will he be able to play for in this mm-hmm. game? You know, is, is will he get injured again? You know, so the injuries are a bit of a concern. What's happening with Smalling? When is he back? Well, he was on the bench, but I mean, then again, he called everybody, didn't he? Yeah, no, but Pirino said that he called them up just to be part of the, yeah, you know, exactly. the team. Yeah, not I play. mean, there was talk of him coming back. I mean, there was talk of him coming back for next weekend, but I don't know, man. Like, mm-hmm. 
it's a huge, huge... I think for, for Roma's sake, I think the most important thing is to try to keep the tie alive for the return because I do expect... I think Smalling will be back for that. I do expect mm. him to be back for that uh, and and be able to to keep. But, but one thing that is certain, and that is that this team is united. The fans are behind this team. They're behind their coach. They're rallying behind one another. They're very united. It's not. It's it's a very united team. It's a very united group. It's a very united club, which is very rare for Roma. This is what happens when Mourinho has his way. When he unites everyone behind him, they mm. they become like this diamond in terms of how. Hard... And I think and I think they're all go. They're all out for the Europa League as well. I think yeah. that they are very much. You know, I, I think they will maybe hopefully get an extra gear out of them that they really they really are all in this together and united for this with yeah. the fans as well. I think the fans can play their part as well at the Olympico. Absolutely. On, on it's, I mean, you, well, that's another thing that Mourinho has done since taking over is that he, the, the European nights at the Olympico have become this kind of, mm. it's everywhere he goes, European nights, evening games become this kind of almost magical aura about them. And mm. now that they've won one tournament last year, um, now it's a it's, shame. It's a shame they're not at home for the second leg. Um, yeah. In terms of, and the same for all the Italian teams, all three of them uh, that are playing uh, foreign teams, they're all at home first leg, including Juventus. Let's talk about Juventus. Um, big, huge win, huge win for the top four. Um, I, I, I mean, they won two nil here at, at Atalanta, which pushes, puts them above Lazio now into second on sixty six points, two points above Lazio, three above Inter. Five above Milan in fifth, which puts them now, if we're assuming they don't get any points penalties, um, it puts them in a really strong position now to qualify, they for, will the, for, qualify. For, for the Champions League. Because I, think Roma, I think Roma and Atalanta are now out of it. I think they're out they of are. it. Uh, they are. And so we're looking at now four teams playing for three positions from second, yeah. second to fifth. And Juventus have the, the biggest gap um, out do. of all of them. So I think they're in a good position now. Um Big big win. Um, I mean, Illing Junior will come to. We've got a little. We're going to do a, 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 just a short profile segment on him, so we'll, we won't talk about him now. But obviously, he was the, the star of the show, the big talking point. But I think that the positives from this game, other than that, is Dusan Vlaovic is back now, which is massive for Juventus going into the, the last few games of the season, and especially for the Europa League. Uh, he came on the last 25 minutes. He scored a brilliant, brilliant finish. He could have probably should have scored another one before that. But if you look at him in the last two games, the brilliant goal that he scored against Lecce and then this goal, I mean, that was that was the Fiorentina Vlaovic yeah. in the way that he connected with those shots, the confidence, the way that he was just single-minded and no faffing around, just bang. And, the inevitability and, factor, like when he's at his best, yeah. he looks inevitable. That's it. Um, just, just, just get it out of your feet and hit it. And mm. and that was a, you know and hit it strike it sweetly and 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 that is massive that that can't can't be underestimated how big that is defensively Juventus were were it felt like I mean you know my opinion I, I don't like this low block defending but it felt like Atalanta could have been there all day all night and they were never going to score in this game they had twenty six shots in this game which again I don't like I think it's too many you can't concede that many shots but. Chesney only actually had one save to make well, in, exactly in, the, in the whole game. Who um, cares and that, how many shots they take when they don't even come to the goal? Well, well, they hit the post <laughs> twice. So, yeah, yeah let's yeah. Not, not pretend there's nothing. But what I'm saying is, you know, it it felt, you, you just felt like they were never going to score. Uh, and I thought that defensively, this was what you've been critical of. The point I'm trying to make is the point, what you've been critical of Juventus in recent games is... Oh, they have addressed organ- it. Organisationally, they were very, yeah. they, I thought they were very, well, they very good in this it. game. They completely addressed it. Um, he, you know, and, and he was a back three of Danilo, Rugani and Sandro. Like, he, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, he got them, he got them, you know, he, he got them doing what he wanted them to do. Uh, mm. And they did it. They executed brilliantly. I thought they were, they defensively, um, Juve were outstanding. Um, they were back yeah. to being an Allegri team. I um, do think, though, I do think that from the Atalanta point of view, the fact that they were they were decimated in attack, I thought that was also played a role in in Juventus yeah. uh, being able to hold them at bay. That, that Atalanta had nothing in attack, no cutting edge. They had no Hoyland or Lukman. This notion, I'm sorry, I'm not letting you off the hook here. Allegri this, Allegri that. Second in the Serie A, 28 goals conceded. That's the third best in all of the Serie A. He's got a five-point cushion down to, to fifth place Milan. He's in the semi-final of the Europa League. 
This in a situation at the backdrop of complete chaos and turmoil with a squad that we all know it's not that good. We know it's not Scudetto winning good. Um, and we know that they're recovering from the Paratici years, not for the nonsense he did off the pitch, but actually the squad. And I don't understand what else you can ask for, like given the circumstances, this yeah. this notion of what what do you want from him? Like what do you want from him? <laughs> well, I think we've done. I think we've done that to death. Um, no, I mean, we're you, not, no, not, because we've no, done it's, that it's, to death. And I, you know, listen, my opinion's never going to change. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I've I've gone through it to death, and we're already an hour into this podcast. Yeah, so I'm not. Right. I'm not going. I'm not going to change my opinion just because they've won one one two. No, games. it's not just one, one two, two games. Two, I mean, two, they're second game. in the Serie A, and they're they're going to finish in the top four. And I think, to be honest with you, I'm looking at these games, and I think Cremonese at home, they're going to bore people to death and win that, and they're going to do something similar against Empoli away. And then it's the Milan game. You know, yeah. he, he was talking about that after the game, saying, you know, I love him. But it's not, it's not, it's, listen. I'm, Did I'm you listen loving- what he said after the game? I was laughing. He's like, well, the maximum that Inter can get is 75 points. The maximum that Milan can get is 74 points. The maximum that we can get is 70, uh, 70, um, 78 points. So if we get between, so if we, if we get between that, we're fine. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Like if we get between 74 and 70, 73 and 74, we should be okay. I mean, he's just, I, I love him. I absolutely love the of course man. You I, bloody love him. I, I, <laughs> of course you I bloody love, love him. You're an Inter fan. No. I mean, I, every Inter fan that I know loves Allegri. They no, all, no. They all, well, no, me. they, I'm not, I'm, no, if, if I want, look again, I love him. If I want Juventus to do poorly, sack him and bring in De Zerbi. Please oh, do it yeah. now. I'm right. dancing that dance. Like from an Inter perspective, please bring in Italiano and De Zerbi. No, nothing would make me as an Inter have fa- have fa- uh, fan happier. Be but, careful what you wish for, Nima. Be no, I, no I, I'd for. love it. I'd love it. Bring him. I hope you. I hope you get him. I really do. I'm really looking forward to I him would, coming in. I and, pray. I, all my prayers would be answered if we get De Zerbi with a young team and young players developing mm-hmm. them. I mean, he would develop these players. I mean, it'd be fantastic. No, I'd, for I'd, the love I'd love it. I'd love it. I'd love to see if he brilliant. doesn't get sacked by December of that season when he's appointed uh, when he's conceded about 40 goals and in and, and, and you've lost nine eight nine games in the in the league um but we'll we'll see we'll see but um oh we, for first of all we'll see how he does next season with brighton because i think he's going to stay there i mean they're going to finish in european spot and i don't think he you know i think he would want to stay there have a full season in the premier league but and also when they're in europe but we'll see but for me allegri look it's he gets the results. It may not look. Oh pretty. my god! Only an Allegri disciple could could give Allegri credit for getting less points than Pirlo and say that he's who done an cares incredible about job. the number of only, points? It's about, only, no, no, no. It doesn't matter. He's it's broken irrelevant. virtually every it's historical record. It's completely irrelevant. He's broken the historical only record. Thing that matters. Nima, is finishing. Allegri, Allegri has broken historical record after historical record this season, and these people still want to give Allegri credit. I find it astonishing. But we have no, to move on, Nima. No, no, because all we have I'm to saying move, is, he, you can't. The, the point thing is irrelevant. What matters is finishing where you do in the league where you the year you play in. Again, Inter won the treble, winning the Serie A after with eighty two points after thirty eight games. You know, Napoli are on eighty three now. So mm. if we're let's to, move on. Yeah. Let's move on to Europa League because where this game was absolutely vital for for Juventus was was the Juventus getting a bit of confidence and form because they were in absolutely horrific form before the Lecce game. They'd one win in in eight. Uh, and you know, I was not feeling confident going into that severe game at all. Now they've got these two wins. Vlaovic has found this, found some goals and confidence. Mm. Um, they defended better in this game. They'll have to defend better, uh, you know, as, at least as well as that uh, against Sevilla. Um, you know, I feel more confident now going going into this game. Um, I think that Sevilla will be very very difficult because they've hit form themselves. I mean, they've yeah. they'd had a disastrous season. They're 11th in La Liga and they were lower. They were fighting relegation for much of the season, but they have suddenly found form since the international break. Since April, they've lost only one of nine games and they've won five of their last six matches. And of course, they knocked Man United out of the Europa League. We know that this is the Europa League of Sevilla. It's the Sevilla League. Uh, their the record same. in the Europa League is incredible. They've won it more than anyone else, six Six victories. They, I mean, the last was in 2020 when they beat when they beat Inter, of course. And they have a lot of things going in their in their favour because of the form. They've had a lot. They've had three days extra rest than Juventus. They've had they had the weekend off. They played on Thursday. Juventus have only had four days rest. 
Um, so, you know, they, 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 they've got some advantages over Juventus and they've got um, some dangerous players. And, and Nesri, I'm a fan of, or Campos, the former Milan guy, very, very good form as well. So it is going to be a very, very difficult game. Um, but, you know, I think, I think Juventus can do it. I think that, you know, you're in the fight, semi-final of a European competition and you're playing Sevilla, <sighs> even though it's their competition. I mean, yeah, you, 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 you have to feel like you can get to the final. Um, so, Look, I Sevilla, think I, think it's, uh, I think in terms of how they play, they actually suit Juve, but they they are good in this competition and they feel, you know, they are very relaxed in it and, and, and they have that kind of, they win this thing uh, pretty much every year and, and it's, I think Juve have to be really switched on. Um, and, and I think it's going to be important to see um, it's going to be important to see uh, how Allegri, how does he manage this? How does he, what What does he think he's going to do? Is he going to just do the usual? Well, I think that's obvious. <laughs> yeah, but also, no, but I'm, I'm also Doesn't thinking. Doesn't do anything else. Yeah. No, no, but I'm thinking, does he start Vlaovic from start? Or does he put Milik on there and then he puts Vlaovic on later? You know, is he going to start Chiesa? Is he going to start Di Maria? Like, how is he going to do? I know that what yeah. he's going to do. We all know what he's going to do. I'm just looking at the, the kind of details of it. Yeah. Um, I, I think I want... he starts. I think he has to start Vlaovic after. But after then he has to start Chiesa as well. Because I, I want to see Chiesa Vlaovic together. For me, it's Chiesa Vial Vlaovic, Di Maria, Milik. Those are the ones I go with. Those two duos. I think Chiesa and Vlaovic complement each other. It's going to be interesting. Does he play Samuel Illing Jr.? That brings us on nicely to, to mm. Samuel Illing Jr. because he, he had his first start for Juventus in this in this 2-0 win against Atalanta. The first Englishman to start for 30 years for Juventus since David Platt in June 1993. And he was he had a fantastic, fantastic performance. Um, he was lively and, and he scored the Really, the decisive goal in this game, Vlaovic's second goal came deep seven minutes, eight minutes into injury time, and and it was Illing Junior that, that broke the deck block in the in the second half. He 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 won the ball back with his with his uh, work rate and his pressing, uh, and then he played uh, played it to to, to Rabio, who then who then played it back across the box, and and um, and uh, and Illing Junior and Illing Junior scored, and um, I think that he's been yeah one of the one of the positives of this season for Juventus has been some of these youngsters that are getting a chance and are coming through the next gen and have shown that they do have potential for the future if they are developed correctly um, in the in the future. Um, and I think he definitely has has potential. So we'll do a little a little profile on on, on Illing Junior. He, he joined Juventus in in 2020. He came from from Chelsea. He spent nine years in Chelsea's youth academy between 2011 and. and and 2020, and he was in the same age group as Armando Broja, who's at who's at Chelsea now, an Albanian striker. Um, but he left um, for Juventus because he felt he, he he would have more chances in their in their next gen team, and and he's been really like one of their bright spots in the in the Primavera team last season. He, he got ten goals and seven assists from from 26 games, and that allowed him to to get his chance in the in the first team. And of course, he. He really has done well when 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 he's played um, for the for the first team this season. He he came on in that defeat to to Benfica uh, in the group stage, the four three, and he and thanks to him, really they launched a late comeback and almost got a point. They ended up losing four three. He got he got an assist uh, in, in that game and nearly set up an equaliser as well. Um, I mean, he's a winger. He's a winger. That's his natural role. But <laughs> as is as is the case of Allegri, Allegri's been playing him left wing back quite a lot. But he's actually shown that. He's actually very, very tactically versatile because if you saw him in this Atalanta game, his defensive coverage, his his work rate gets up and down, but he's also seems to be very switched on in the way that he traps back and gets in position. Um, we saw that with the way that he won the ball for the for the goal that he scored. Um, he's actually done really, really well um, um, at, la- at left wing back, but he is he is naturally a winger. Um, but he's 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 a quite tall. He's 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 powerful. He's he's quick. Um, he he's, he goes both outside and inside, uh, and he's got a goal threat. And uh, you know his three seasons at youth level for Juventus: nineteen goals and twenty assists. I mean, he's um, yeah, I, I, I like him. Yeah, no, I, I like him too. I think he's been one of like this the Allegri and the kids. 
Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's been really interesting to see Fajoli Miretti, this kid. Um, I think that's good news for 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 Juve because with Rovella and Cambiaso being as good as they've been this season in the Serie A, um, that's great news uh, for for them. But no, it's he's, he's a really really interesting player, and and I like the fact that he's yes he's a winger, but he's actually been really good as a left wing back as well, uh, and, I, yeah. and I like his technique. Um, I think he's uh, he, he, he comes across as a very mature and intelligent player and person in how he behaves on the pitch. I don't know if I know. like him because he because he's unpredictable as well. Yeah. Like with with Kostic, Kostic but he's predictable. Kostic he's the is the most predictable player that you will ever get. It's just he just crosses it as soon as he yeah. gets it. it. Doesn't matter where 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 he got. And look, you can't argue with the assists that that Kostic has got over the course of the season. I think that obviously he's going to guarantee you a number of goals through his through his goal contributions through his through what he does. But I think that sometimes in certain games against certain teams against certain level of of, of, of opponent and opposition, you know, he can be predictable. Whereas Illing Junior, you know, especially as an impact player as a sub, and I, and I, that's where I think he'll probably come on as he'll be a sub. I think for this severe game, um, because you know Allegri is go is a pragmatist. You know, I think he is unpredictable, and, and he gives you that that X factor. And he's because he's so young; he's nineteen. He, he still hasn't been, hasn't had that coached out of him. And I think that I hope it isn't coached out of him. But I think that he's, um, yeah, I think he's a useful weapon, and I think he can be a useful weapon for the rest of this this season for for, for Juventus. He's he's, he's um, he will play his part, I think, between now and the end of the season. Agreed. Okay, um, relegation race in Serie A. Um, Nima, um, we said Cremonese, on Thursday. Cremonese, yeah, go on. Yeah, we we said on Thursday if Cremonese win that game, they threw a monkey wrench in it. Well, they won and they threw a monkey wrench in it. Like they, they did, but only for twenty four hours because Lecce then bloody lost at home to Verona, which leaves a six point gap between Cremonese and uh, and and, uh, and and safety. Uh, so uh, I think that. Uh, I, I think it's Cremonese are down now because of that because of that result. I think if 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 Lecce had won that game, I think Cremonese are right in there with a yeah. chance of of saving themselves. But six points with four games left, when Cremonese still have to play Juventus in their next game, and correct me if I'm mistaken, they have to play one of the other big guns as well before the end of the season, if I'm not mistaken. No, they're think. playing. Yeah, they're playing Lazio. Yeah. So I mean. Uh, no, I, I, it was, I, I, it was I, always a tall order. It. It, was always, it. it was always a, a tall order and a big ask, so it's not going to happen. But it was it was very interesting that they beat Spezia because I think that defeat essentially relegates Spezia now. That's, that's where it's massive. That's where the monkey wrench is. Yeah. It's, it's, it's with Spezia. It's, it's, you know, you're back in Verona to so stay up now. Yeah, and, and you've got to hand it to them because what Verona did, Zaffaroni has done a fantastic job. And Hellas, are st- I think they're staying up now again. And it's it's astonishing because the great escape that they keep doing year after year after year is really impressive. Um, and no. it's... Uh, no, it, it, and they've already... It's deserved it's, it. The second half of the season, they've, they've really stepped it up. They and they've been playing well uh, in the second half of the season. Uh, and the signing of Ngong, if I'm pronouncing it right, is definitely... Ngong, yeah. Ngong yeah, is definitely... Um, has definitely been key for them. I think he's been really, really good since they signed him um, in January. And uh, again, Hien at the back, he's, he's, he's worthy like of a bit. Yeah, he he's, is. He's worthy of a bigger club. Well, he is. I, think, I mean, we're not. We're, I think Torino, but we're not sure about what's happening. There, Even potentially yeah. higher level, potentially. Yeah. Not. I mean, I think that's his next step. But after that, I think I don't. I think there's the possibility he could even go higher than that. If I agree. Be. He's only twenty four, so yeah. there there is there is potential, and, and there are years there. No, it's I'm I'm so impressed by what they've done, and and the fact that they beat Lecce. I mean, Lecce, they're four points off Spezia. I mean, they this mm. is this is where it gets a bit because I think it would be so unfair if Lecce were to go down. I don't think they deserve that. No, I um, don't think so. Especially the way they played the first half of the season. Yeah. But I mean, you look at Spezia; they've got they've got Milan in the next game. I can't see them. Look, I, see them I wouldn't them. put it past if they... But then could. Milan might rotate their whole team, so yeah. who knows? This is what I'm saying. But the thing is, like, if you look at Spezia's form, it's I mean, they haven't won since the 10th of March when they beat Inter. Since then, they've they've played... Um, they, they, they've lost five and drawn three. 
Well, they've got it's, one point in five last five games. And, yeah, it's just they're, they're they are four. awful, um, and and the and the and they're at home. So you know, we'll see. I mean, this is the last chance saloon. But having said that, this you know they can afford to lose to Spain, to 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 Milan as as La, as Lecce go to Lazio, and I expect them to Lecce to lose that game too. But mm-hmm. then on the twenty first of May, noon kickoff, Lecce Spezia. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Ah, this this every year it happens, doesn't That's it? That's already in your calendar. Isn't oh, it? you betcha, <laughs> you betcha. <laughs> I'm not missing Lecce Spezia for anything in the world. Yeah. Um, and yeah, no, it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be really interesting. But I, I really want Lecce to stay up. I don't think they deserve to go down. Um, no. I, I had Spezia. I think in my. I'm, we're, I think we should get back to that when when the season's over and our final to see what we did, how we did with our predictions. Oh, okay. I'm not but, sure if I want to. On my, I think we both had Inter to win the Scudetto. I remember. Yeah, that. I did. But, but I, I had Spezia going down, and I think I had Napoli as my dark horse to win the Serie A. Yeah, no, um, you did. You did. I'll give you credit for that. You definitely. I'll definitely give you credit for that. Um, <laughs> the other, the other Serie A fixture was Torino Monza one one. <laughs> this um, is to me this this classic. Non, end of season between two teams who've got nothing to play for. They're mentally already on holiday. Like it's just mid mm. mid table clash that ends in a one one. There was an outrageous piece of skill in this game by yeah. Pessina for before Monza's yeah. goal, where he like played it through his legs and flicked it. Oh wow, yeah, wow, absolutely amazing. Um, the other games that we're recording this on Monday afternoon, on Monday evening, are Empoli, Salernitana, Udinese, Sampdoria. And Sassuolo versus Bologna, not really too much to play for, in all honesty, in those games, I don't think. Empoli can can pretty much, or Anselenta can pretty much definitely um, make themselves safe. But I think they're, they're safe already, if, I'm, if, we're, if we're being honest. OK, uh, the other game, just to mention, we've already done Champions League and Europa League previews. Just to mention the Conference League, there's Fiorentina versus Basel in the semi-finals, the first leg in Florence. Um, I think we're both very confident that Fiorentina go through this because Basel, um, I'm kind of surprised they've got to the semi-final. They're, they're not having a good season. They're fifth in the Swiss League. And their form is very inconsistent. And Fiorentina, Fiorentina's form has gone off the boil a little bit, but I think it, that has been partly down to their, their focus has gone and I think they really are concentrating on the cup competition. Which is the so. right thing to do. Like Which you is can't. The right thing to do, yeah. I mean, Fiorentina haven't won anything in ages, so yes, 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 mm. yes. They and I thought they did all right against Napoli. I mean, I know Napoli were not probably not one hundred percent focused either, but I thought that they, they, you know, they they played well enough in that game to give them confidence, you know, going into this match. And I, I think that yeah, I think they're, they're strong favourites to go through. I, 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 if they don't go through, I'll be the first one to be having it at, at Italiano for not going through because I think. Mm. This is a golden opportunity for them to get to a European final. Uh, Milenkovic is suspended for the first leg. Cabral, we hope, is back from injury. I think it's touch and go because um, I think that is important, having that striker because he's been really good uh, in 2023. And I think that that definitely makes a difference for them. Um, once Cabral started scoring in 2023, the whole of the attack started doing better and they started scoring more goals. Just having that number nine that can score goals because Jovic has been a disaster this season, let's be honest. Um, Cabral has just turned it around completely. So having him back, I think, is is important. But ultimately, yeah, we are expecting Fiorentina to go through here. For sure. For sure. Okay. We really are. And and I think they have to. And I love that you call Basel Basel. I, that, that is something that I absolutely <laughs> love. I'm going to call them Basel from now on. <laughs> what do you call them? Basel. Basel their name. Basel. Yeah, Basel. Basel. <laughs> Basel, Faulty. Basel Faulty. Have you watched Faulty Towers, Nima? Of course I have. Yeah. Basel Faulty. It's brilliant. <laughs> absolutely brilliant. I love that you call them Basel. It's brilliant. <laughs> what was the name of the wife? <laughs> I can't remember. Well, on that uh, note, we're gonna go, we're gonna do prem face of <laughs> prem face of the week and badger of the week. Right, that's my prem face moment. First of all, before we get to prem face of the week, badger of the week is an is an easy one, right? It's Napoli, right? Yeah, no, it's it's many things. <laughs> it's many things. It's it's Napoli. It's Piscina skill, and I got to say, for me, it's also Vlaovic. Um, yes, good. Shout. I don't. Yeah. I can't think. Remember, I have rooted for many players in my life who wears a Juve shirt to score <laughs> as much as I did that afternoon when they were racially abusing him. Gosh, yes, that was down. That was down in our plan, and we should have talked about it by now. And I'm glad you mentioned it because we absolutely have to chat about. 
the, the racist abuse because that was absolutely shameful. Uh, and it was so disgusting. Was, so it was it Gasparri was... and yeah, so the anti Zingaro, the gypsy, no, the, 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 yeah. the, 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 the anti Romani chants. Yeah, and that's, chants. A, that's a, something that people need to understand that you know this isn't th- this this has historical connotations that go back to Nazism. This referral to Slavic people in the derogatory term a gypsy. Zingaro. That mm. is, that is, th- this has historic people in, in other countries and other parts of the world may not know this or even in Europe know this, but this is, this is, this has deep historic connotations. No, he's not, uh, Vlaovic is not a Romani, uh, does not belong to the Romani minority. Because he's Slavic. He's but a, he's because he's Slavic. And the fact that, but mm. the fact that it's not even the calling him a Romani. No, they're calling him a, the, the, the equivalent of the N word, if you want, if you will. Yeah. Um, that's what that word means. And it, 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 it is a, you know, the Romani people, the way that, that they have been persecuted throughout history and in Europe, especially. Oh no! Yeah, it's abs- absolutely. Like, it's I all mean, I'm going to say is Google Romani Holocaust. Google well, yeah, during Roma- the Holocaust, the yeah. Jews, the, yeah. the, the 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 Jews, the the Romani, the, Romani, the yeah. disabled. I mean, yeah. they were all equally uh, yeah. Yeah. They were yeah, all exactly. equally, uh, uh, yeah. you know, um, persecuted and murdered. Persecuted and murdered. I mean, we're, yeah. we're talking about a group of people in in Sweden up until 1976. The Swedish government had to, in the 90s, apologize for this. Right? Mm-hmm. They were forcibly either knowingly or not, sterilized 60,000 women because they were deemed to be racially, they were deemed to be racially inferior. Like that's the level of the persecution that we are talking about when we talk about what happened to the Romani people, right? And still happens, by the way. This is a group that for centuries, a minority that for centuries have not been allowed to own property, to move where they want to, live where they want to. They have been denied citizenship and still are in parts of, of, of Europe. Like yeah. this is something. So the fact and this that- is this is a big Italian problem as well. That the refer the, the the referring to anybody from not just the old ex Yugoslav Yugoslavia, but Eastern Europe. You know, it's an Eastern European. They're a gypsy. You know, it's just yeah. it's this is a big big problem within uh, with, with with in Italy and elsewhere. But you know, we're talking about Italy yeah. here. Yeah. It's a huge huge problem when we're talking about racism in Italy. Um, that is part of it. That Very is, much this part is, this of is it. a huge, huge cultural problem uh, mm. in Italy, uh, and it do, and it's not helped when when you have the remarks of of, of Gasparini um, at the at the end of the game. I mean, it just it's just not. It's, it's just Here's not the helpful. thing, though. I don't. I'm not going to defend him because his, his his comments are indefensible. But he is 65 years old, and his reaction to that, to me, is exactly that of a 65 um, year old uh, man. The, the fact it's that, also a reaction of how Italians often refer to, to racism and discrimination against players that are black or are or or, or Romani or, or you know whoever they're discriminating is that they don't see it as discriminatory. They see it as getting a uh, you know it's insulting your opponent in order to try and you know put them off their game or to. Well, what edge. he's saying, no, he's got this. What he said was, there's a big difference between racism and insulting, and he doesn't think this was insulting because, you know, and and it's like that's because again, it's it's an education issue. He does not know this. He's 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 not aware. But doesn't he? Does he not mean that because he thinks that he sees it like? Remember the way that they used to describe the Balotelli uh, racism, like it was, you know, you're doing it not because you're being racist to him, but because you're trying to put him off his game. And yeah, that's to, fair enough. You're that's trying a, to insult that's him. That's is, fair that he, is that maybe? what he meant or maybe but but it's it doesn't matter because it's stupid yeah. and he didn't make it any better and it's not the first time that this happened to Vlaovic at no. in Bergamo against Atalanta we all mm. we I think most of us have seen that infamous video now when he's waiting to be interviewed and about thousands of people are shouting at him that he's a effing gypsy like yeah. it's 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 it and I'm glad that he reacted the way he did and said no. you know score and then he gets booked and he gets yeah, booked this is some, yeah, I mean, Doveri, just, yeah Doveri just, booked him but th- this is what we learned from the Lukaku debacle is this is what they want the referees to do the referees have to act this way, and then the then then this is going to go to the FIGC. They're going to appeal it. He's going the, the yellow card is going to stay, and then the president has to intervene and pardon him. This is apparently how they want to run things mm. in the Italian FA. I find it ridiculous, but that's how they've decided that they're going to handle it. 
I mean, you're just encouraging. Well, I, mean, encouraging I, don't even know what to, I don't even know what to say. I mean, like, you're encouraging I, I, it, surely. I just don't even know what to say anymore. But, I mean, it, because they... So, they what, put, so what if Vlaovic is on a yellow card like he was Lukaku? Yeah, was, and he then he would off. have been sent off. And then and he missed, the yeah, entire... Yeah. No, he wouldn't have because the entire circus we saw with Lukaku would have repeated itself. Hmm. But, I mean, the, the difference is, is that Lukaku and, and Vlaovic didn't have any effect on that game in particular because it was the end of the game. But can you imagine if it was the 30th minute and they get a second yellow card yeah, and they're off? I and know, it that I game. know, I know. I know, and it's stupid, and it's ah, uh, that's my reaction to it. Just sigh, yeah. it's exhausting. Yeah. Well, we'll see what Atalanta do. We'll see if they put out bans and like Juventus did, or if they try and <laughs> do what Gasparini did and and like don't do anything about it. Not see a problem in it. Um, mm. It is a problem in Atalanta as well, actually. They're, it's they're a fans. problem all over Italy, and, and I mean, it's a problem all over Italy. But Atalanta have, do have form on this as well. Well, yeah. The, the, I mean, you can, you, it's it's all over Italy, and then nothing happens, yeah. and 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 there, there there needs to be a uniform action. Everything we've spoken about this in the past, and there isn't any, and it's absolutely disgusting. Mm. Um, and, and I have to give credit though for Juventus for the fact that they did end up banning two play two, and then they no, I'm sorry, the, I can't. They I'm worked sorry. with the, they worked two with the authorities out of, out of a majority of yeah, but they banned 171. Yeah, but they banned 171 yeah. Yeah, after well, with all the authorities. I mean, that is more than anyone any club. Yeah has ever done. And that's, well, that's what everyone needs thing. to do. That's the problem. It shouldn't be a club that does this. <laughs> this is exactly no. it. It shouldn't be but the it has club. To start, it has to start somewhere. And if I the Juventus that. are leading the way in doing it, then you have yeah, to give well, them credit fine, for that. well, That's great that they're doing it, but I'm not giving anyone credit because this should not happen because there should be a, a, a mechanism in place for this not to happen. Like, do you know what I yeah. mean? This is, the, the, yeah. this is again, and, and Juventus should not be doing this themselves. There should be a rule in place that prevents this from happening and that there are actual consequences. There should be a, a strategy and there should be step one, step two. No, step absolutely, three yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm just talking about this from Juventus's point of view. We need to see the same yeah. reaction from Atalanta. You know, what Juventus has done, whatever, however critical we want to be on them for other stuff, mm. they did brilliantly on this. They banned 171 people. That's more than anyone has ever mm. done in, in any a- area of Italian football ever. So we have to give them credit for that. However long it took to get to that stage or whatever, it, it's happened. Oh. So I bet I'm in agreement with you. Yeah, it, mm. it shouldn't be down to the clubs. But, it's you know, I'm saying, thing, I'm saying that I want to see Atalanta put out a strong, you know, stance themselves. Mm. Uh, and if that happens, then hopefully that puts the pressure on the FYGC more. Mm. Well, well, you know, we'll see if that happens. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Prem face though, prem face of the week. Do you have one? Um, I think we have like I don't know five. <laughs> oh, do you? Okay. No, but like, is it usually? No, I think Sam Allardyce is the like yeah. creme de la creme, isn't it? Sam Allardyce saying he's the best manager in the world well, after getting appointed by Leeds United last week. He had his press conference and he said, "I quote: There's nobody ahead of me in football terms in world football. Not Pep Guardiola, not Glop, Glop, Klopp." <laughs> not Arteta they do what they do I do what I do but in terms of depth of knowledge I am up there with them I am not saying I'm better than them but I'm as good as them <laughs> <laughs> oh I love it I love it yeah. it's so good big sound there's mate. a lot of people have been sending us clips of the, an old clip of I can't some some guy saying that Erling Haaland was crap. I think we already had him as a prem face before the season started, and there's a guy who's holding his face. Oh, I know which guy it is. It's yeah. that Rory the Tory, isn't it? Thank you, Rory, Rory the, Tory. the Tory. Yeah, Rory the Tory, the Chelsea. Uh, yeah, yeah, Chelsea. that's the one. Yeah, Chelsea, is he Chelsea so, so TV? Or yeah, he something Chelsea like that. TV? But it's not. But that we can't pick that because that's old. We're already. Picking. He's the guy that he's the guy that said that basically only. Only fans that go to the stadium can be can be called fans of their club. Everyone else is not a fan. That's what, yeah, that's what he once said. Because he basically said that any Chelsea fans um, that, that don't go to Stamford Bridge can't be considered Chelsea fans. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's what he said. And like I remember he, he basically, like, the whole of Chelsea around the world went absolutely berserk at him for saying that. No, I remember that. I remember he said lots of, he said, but I'm just saying we can't pick that because it was not just one person. I think 10, 15 people sent that to us, sent that to us. Mm. Um, and I just want to say we can't, that that's really old and we did pick it at the time. Yeah, um, we did. We've done that before. That has been a previous yeah. prem face. Yeah. yeah. 
but yeah, so this is that. That's an oldie. It's a, and it's an oldie, but a goodie. <laughs> it's an oldie, a goodie. And there's far too many like contenders for Prem Face of the Week that we would never dare do the same Prem Face twice. I mean, no, we no, no, we can't. We, we can't. We don't, we don't recycle Prem Faces yeah. now because <laughs> there's no, there, there's so much of them and they're fresh. We like our Prem Faces fresh and yes. juicy. Yes, we do. <laughs> okay, right. Let's leave it at that. It was a bit of a longer show today. Yes. Uh, quite a long show actually one hour yeah. and a half didn't realize it went on that, that <laughs> long. um yeah it was a lot to talk about because because of the champions league and europe european football as well and three huge games um in the top four race so yeah there was a lot to talk about okay right we'll be back on tuesday for q a and then thursday to review the the big champions league game between yeah. uh, milan and inter which is on wednesday evening mm. So, yeah, lots to talk about. Um, we will see you then. We Enjoy might the... also, actually, we might also have a, have an interview uh, this week as well, which will come out on Friday. Uh, mm. So we'll, we'll, we'll you yeah. know, a special interview with, with, a, with someone. But, we'll, you know, watch this space for that. Yeah. Yeah, if it's not this Friday, it'll definitely be probably next week or, yeah. or very soon. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Okay. Have a great week, guys. We will see you on Tuesday. Ciao, ciao.